introduction. Once I once I pass it over to, and if you have anything before I pass it over, just let me know. Okay. All right. And uh, are we live over the? You, We're live. We're live. Well, uh, welcome. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, David just left. <laughs> But welcome to God is in the House, and uh, we're excited here. We're, we're trying something a little new. We're doing a, a left hand, right hand, and I don't know which hand you're on for Resurrection Life Ministries, but we're also doing a stream yard, and we're also doing a face, Facebook Live, and the reason we're doing this is that we have a wonderful worshiper from uh, Ottawa. Uh, well, or Gatineau uh, now. Well, yeah. well it's, it says Ottawa, but she lives in <laughs> Gatineau, Quebec, and they're going to be doing, uh, uh, Marie is going to be doing worship from uh, Eastern Canada, from uh, Gatineau, Quebec, along with uh, David, our production manager, and uh, putting he's putting everything together. And then Ralph, uh, Reverend Ralph back there for Facebook is also gonna, we're gonna, we're, we've got multiple cameras going. And I want you to know that Heaven's camera is on you tonight. All Heaven is open up tonight. Well, and uh, we're already live on Facebook, uh, David. No, no, we're, we're not live yet. Okay, but on Facebook? Sorry, bro. We are live on We Facebook. are live on Facebook, but he's not live yet. Yeah. So it, it will pop in. So welcome to God is in the House. How close are we going live there, David, on Amen. StreamYard? Right now, I'm pressing it now. Okay. We're, okay, so broadcast we'll, is live. Okay, so you get a double-double. Uh, yeah. Broadcast is live. Why don't you get in here a little closer, honey? Look at that. No, that's okay. Right no, no. Like, we're, we're, This is a new uh, uh, opening here. This is the new opening. Welcome to God is in the house. We've already uh, welcomed Ralph on, uh, uh, you know, he's got RR going on Facebook. On, uh, we're doing, we, we've got different multiple cameras everywhere. Now, God's got a, a camera on you right now, and his camera is love. What do you think about that, honey? Well, you know what? The Lord is always, he's always looking not, not only upon us, but he's looking out for us. He's, he's always got us in his sights. And he never loses track of where we are, what's going on with us. He never, we never are out of his vision and his place of sight. And so he always knows. And just because you, someone may or may not know him yet, or just because sometimes you feel as though you're in that really dry place, it doesn't mean that you are alone. It may feel like you've been abandoned. It may feel like you're out alone in the middle of the desert or the field or the prairies. Um, in winter, but it does not mean that you were alone, Amen. because the God of the universe, He sees you and He He knows the pain. He's been through a lot of pain as well when He before He went to that cross, and and uh, you know, and even as He went on the cross and completely, totally won the victory for us, and now for us to start walking into that victory, and that's that's what we want to be able to help. Um, folks be able to step in and gain hope, gain hope and walk into victory tonight. Amen. Yeah. So there's a number of things that we're going to be uh, prophetically speaking and uh, prophetically teaching, but the Holy Spirit's going to do most of this. So just open your hearts to what the Holy Spirit has for you tonight. Yeah. And we're going to have worship coming in like a tsunami from Eastern Canada. Uh, Maria is <laughs> going to be uh, starting off with, we're going to do three worship songs. And we want to really en just enter into this worship uh, in spirit and in truth, as as it says in John chapter 4, verses uh, 22 to 24. For the Father seeks those who worship in spirit and in truth. What's okay, that? I thought you were going to do the prayer a little bit? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Les, okay. okay, Les has got a prayer. We're going to do, she says she's got a prayer. So let's do the prayer. All right. Well, you know what? Um, just like we mentioned a few minutes ago, um, and Ray was talking about, like on the Facebook Live, you may not have come come with that on StreamYard yet, but talking about the sense of hopelessness, oh. the number of people around the globe that are suicidal, contemplating yes. suicide, those who have been at the very edge. And our God is a God of hope, and yes. he wants to see hope restored in your life. I'm going to, it's a, it's a decree and a declaration from uh, some daily decrees that uh, Brenda Kuhneman, but I'm also going to use it as a, as a bit of a prayer guide as well. And it's called Hope Restored. And so we can say, we can say and we can speak it into the realm, the heavenly realms, and we speak this into anyone that needs to grab a hold of hope. And we say, today we decree that your hope is restored and springs forth as a tree of life. 
We say that every delay is converted into acceleration. Amen. We prophesy and we say and we speak that we're speaking in we're speaking into the heavens and we are prophesying and saying that every setback becomes a setup for something greater than you even dreamed of. We break that spirit of delay. Jesus. And we say that you are you receive a new sense of anticipation and confidence in the name of Jesus. Pray that blessings increase and fullness will break loose. There was a word that like may had the May-Finley, word yes. that one of the words for tonight was like a breakthrough. And we, we just say yes, there we're praying that for blessings increase and fullness will break loose, will break through, and overflow upon you for this current Amen. season, this time that you're in right Amen. now, in Amen. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, in Jesus. the name of Jesus. We speak to your future. Yes. Because your future starts right now going forward. We speak to your future even in five minutes from now, in, in five days from now. We speak to your future and your destiny. And we declare that all that God has planned for you cannot be aborted by the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name, and good things will begin to be manifest for you. Good things are coming your way. It is a season of good. So you grab a hold to a se- of a season of, for good. Hallelujah. And grab a hold. We know Break that in, in Proverbs thirteen twelve it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. So when hope, when hope now enters, and I, in the name of Jesus, I just send hope. I send hope into the very hopeless situations. I send hope into the, that place of darkness where you feel as though you can't even see in front of you because it's so dark. I speak hope and I speak light and I speak love and the blood of Jesus Christ will smash and deliver and destroy all of that stuff in Jesus' name. <laughs> Instead of instead of, of instead of the whatever suicidal thinking or planning that may have entered in and into somebody's mind, instead of blood splatters of your life. It will be and is the blood spiders of Jesus that has already accomplished and met you ahead of time. And so I declare that it's the blood spiders of Jesus that have already cleared the pathway, that have already opened a door for you to walk through. The door of life, choose life and not death. And so it's that door of life and that comes through the blood of Jesus and the cross where he accomplished and accomplished it all. So you just need to reach out and grab a hold of him, uh, grabbing a hold of Jesus. And you might be so desperate, but you just reach out and, and just by taking that act and reaching out and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. And he is right there to answer you. And so I say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you bring hope to the hopeless. You bring light to the dark and smatter, smash all that darkness apart. You bring healing to the brokenhearted. Father, I just thank you that you meet every single need. And there's nothing too big or too small for our God to meet you at. So we thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Can I insert something here? Yeah, yes, Ralph go ahead. Like Ralph is just going to... In- in- as soon as I do that. Ralph is just going to there. speak into... Uh, if you are one of those who is praying for someone who is suicidal, I want to give you some hope. Forty, almost 44 years ago now, I was one of those. Mm. I was in a suicidal depression. I was rapidly headed downhill. I just hadn't figured out or hadn't thought about doing myself in, but I was at that place where there was almost nothing left uh, to keep me going. The good news is one man, one man that I know of, a charismatic Mennonite, faithful unto the Lord, knew by the word of the Lord that there was someone at MTS, Manitoba Telephone System, where we both worked at that time, that was suicidal. 
and he was praying for someone at MTS who was suicidal. One day, by chance, he's flipping through our internal phone book, and the Lord highlights a name. Now he's praying for Ralph Beamish, mm -hmm. who is suicidal. I want you to know that I came really, really close, either to being a mental vegetable or being a literal physical suicide. And one man's prayers made the difference. I wound up, <laughs> part of a longer story, but I, the Lord sovereignly reached me, not through anyone, but by his spirit. And I wound up laying on the floor, uh, praising the Lord, uh, laughing and giggling as wave after wave of unconditional love washed over me. So my word to you is if you are praying for someone who is suicidal, keep it up. Don't quit. There is hope right up to the last moment. There is hope that your prayers will be answered. So keep praying. It's very important that you do because it was one man's prayer that Amen. saved me that I know of for sure. One man's prayer that was praying, and that's almost 44 years ago. But I'm here today to tell you that I'm here because of prayer for a suicidal person. So carry on. So with with that, um, Marie is going to come in with a worship song, and her worship song is your 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 name is holy. So any anybody that's having difficulty in their thought patterns in their dream patterns, uh, visions, uh, whatever it may be, or even even their tongue of how they speak against themselves or other people, God is going to bring a change right now. There's going to be a change that comes inside you, that unconditional love, even to love yourself. It said the Lord, Lord thy God, it says in, in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and to love your neighbor. All those who might be in that place of suicide right now, but also to love yourself. So if that is you, you need to come to the place and forgive yourself and love yourself and, and love the Lord your God with all your heart as we go into worship right now. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it talks about living hope, and we'll get back to that. But go ahead, Marie. Marie, lead us in to worship. Bless you. Can you go see 
the person in th that we're talking about, and right away, the person went, and thank goodness, when I said to the person, go and throw up, that person listened, and that person went and threw up, and um, my husband came, and you know, the, we, we called the, the ambulance and whatnot, and that person is alive today. Thank he you, Jesus. So close. Thank you, Jesus. He was so close. Thank you, I Jesus. Didn't, if I didn't obey to the voice of God telling me to go call that person, I could have lost that person today. I think it's, this is prophetic right now, Marie. I, I'd like you to pray for Stacy's children. She's in Philadelphia. She's straight south of you, kind of, from Gatineau, Quebec, Ottawa. So uh, right now, uh, Stacy has three children, uh, and Cedric is the oldest. So let's just pray right now for them, uh, just south of you in the United States in, in Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Let's... Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You are. You have created this family. You have created yes, Lord. your own image. But Satan is jealous. Satan is jealous and want to take away and want to steal and yes, want to kill and want to destroy. But today we stand in unity in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We rebuke that spirit. Yes, Jesus. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We come against it. We say you come yes, out in the name of yes, Jesus. Jesus. You have no authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You come close to this family ever again. Your time is up. This family yes. is protected. There is the fire of the Holy Spirit which is surrounding right now Stacy and her family in the name of Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Holy Thank you, Jesus. Spirit is surrounding them right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Yes. Able to prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today is the day of, of, of a shift in their life. Yes. In yes. The name yes. Of Jesus. Today is a shift, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we take authority, the authority that you have given us, Lord, to cast out all the things that are surrounding this family and troubling this family. We say your time is up. Yes. Amen. Isaiah 10, 27. I, it says the anointing, it says the anointing, the fat, the anointing, the Christ anointing smashes and destroys the yoke of oppression. So we just speak, continue to speak that in scripture. And as we go into worship and even with Robert from Gimli, you know, his, he, he, he put out a request today because today is, is praying against those who have suicide day here in Canada. So we say no suicides today in Canada. It, it going forth, we say breakthrough. The blood of Jesus come to clear the minds of all those who are coming into distorted thinking and distorted dreams, distorted visions. We say no, only the light of God, only the first fruits of God come into what they're thinking. Not death, but life. Life abundantly. We come against the devil. We come against the devourer that would want to bring them into a place of hopelessness is what we've been praying about with Leslie and so on. And we say breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough through the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go ahead, Marie. Take us into worship. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. We give you the glory. Because you are glorious. Nothing compares to you, Lord. Nothing compares to you, Jesus. All glory it belongs to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your mighty name. I enter the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship 
Yes, Lord, to the blood of the Lamb. Oh, 
Yes, Jesus, high and lifted up. You would be high and lifted up. Jesus, you are high and lifted up. King of kings, Lord of lords. Oh, 
Amen. That's the desire of our heart is to lift your name up. That's what we want, Lord. For you to be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, from the inside, and from the inside is what we've been talking about here. Thank you, Marie, for those worship songs. You know, uh, your your name is holy, and Jesus worthy is. I'm sorry. Worthy is the Lamb, and let praises arise. And you know, you you selected some beautiful worship songs for us to go into this particular segment of the. Uh, of our gathering and uh, you know breakthrough was the word and May do you have anything else on that breakthrough or any like when did you when did you receive breakthrough May? For myself? Yeah like we said for, you, for, you, as, as word for tonight, you had a word for tonight and, you, and breakthrough was that word and, and it really is so this is May Finley from Brandon uh, her husband's on the other side but he's shy He's looking after Dougie, <laughs> but uh, May, uh, you know, she's she, she's very prophetic, and uh, she's always a scribe in writing. So breakthrough, uh, breakthrough is a wonderful thing. So, well, I guess it was uh, yesterday at time of prayer that there was one lady that started interceding for someone close to us, and she really went into intercession and and. Uh, I believe that person's going through a depression also. Mm. So she was very deep into it. So, And then this other lady said, I think there was some deliverance. So mm. I pray there was because uh, that person's very close to us. So mm. I could identify with what Ralph was talking about tonight. Yeah. So the testimony of that breakthrough in people's lives is so important right now. Yeah, and I pray that it stays that way. Mm. That yes. breakthrough is part of the continuing breakthroughs. Yeah, and and uh, well, Dougie's he's he's, he's working. He, he's saying amen, and he's working <laughs> Doctor Don there for cookies. Anybody that's been here, Doctor Don keeps busy. But uh, the scripture that I, that God gave me on this breakthrough, we talked about Isaiah ten twenty seven, and I I prophetically spoke that. But I'm going to read Micah chapter two, verses twelve and thirteen. And you may want to pick that up on, in, in one of the others. But this is the restoration uh, scripture of. Uh, Israel, okay, uh, and when I say restoration, we're going through a lot of restoration right now and reconciliation and, and things here in Canada and around the world, and restoration means to be, let's rebuild, you know, like Isaiah uh, 61, 1 to 4, we can read that, but uh, this particular is Israel's uh, is being restored, and uh, it's important for us, if we're going through that process of restoration and rebuilding the walls and rebuilding things, that it's, it's a good thing that we come to a place where we know that, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, just closer. Okay. All well, right. It doesn't have to be. It just. Okay. So in this scripture here, it says, I will, in uh, Micah chapter 2, I'm reading out of the New King James. And, uh, and, and we want to look at this. If you're in a place that needs to be restored, if your foundation is, we talked about that last week, the foundation needs to be strong, or if things are breaking down around you, like uh, when you look what water has done and breaking through the infrastructure, we talked about infrastructures out in, uh, out in Western Canada. Well, the infrastructure is being broken down in Eastern Canada right now because of storms and water and wind. And Do you, do you think God is speaking uh, around the world? Um, he is. And so being restored is a lot of, of the infrastructure that's going to have to happen here in Canada from, from east to west and to the north, right up into Inuit areas. So I will, it says, and Israel is, you know, Jacob Jacob became Israel when he had that time of being restored, of the crossover of where he went from being called Jacob to being, becoming Israel, which is, you know, the promise or the, uh, the, prince, the princes of heaven of what we're grafted into now through Israel. So Israel is being restored. 
So it says, I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. A lot of people are talking about remnant right now. They're talking about the sons and daughters of the Most High who are hearing the voice of God, who are hearing the voice of pay during this time of uh, 5780 in this next 10 years. But right now we're in the year of the Hebraic calendar of 5782 in the month of Kislev. And this is the month of promises being fulfilled. This was the month where the ark hit the ground and Mount Ararat and the promise came there and God says, I am not going to do this again. So those people on Western Canada and Eastern Canada, don't worry about the, the water is going to drain off. Okay, this is this is just a difficult time. Uh, we're, 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 there's no more. There's not going to be a flood like that. God promised there'd never be a flood like that. It doesn't mean we're not going to go through the storms. So here it says, "I will surely gather my remnant of Israel. I will put them together like sheep of the fold." Do you not think the these storms and these different things are going to bring us closer together? You know, I have called more people in uh, British Columbia because I've been worried about them. Because, in other words, my friends, I want to call them as, how are they doing? And uh, apparently, you know, it's raining right now in Vancouver, and there's a greater storm coming this weekend. So we need to pray for our Oroshatareba, that that storm that's coming is not going to affect any more of the infrastructure there in, in, in Vancouver and area in the lower mainland. We, we say, take that storm and take it out to the sea and let it be dissipated. Or put it in the mountains where nobody's at. You know, let's take it out there. And if there's a fire somewhere, take the storm and take out the fire, not the people or the infrastructure. So let's direct that storm to where it's going to be the purpose of taking out something that, that is bringing destruction to maybe man through a fire or something. So it says, like a, and it says, like a flock in the midst of their pasture. Okay, so we are a flock. We are sons and daughters of the Most High. We are part of, the, part of we are grafted into the root as it says in Romans chapter uh, 9 and chapter 11. And that Dougie, he is being uh, a root and eating too many of them cookies. But anyway, so, and it says, they shall, they shall make a loud noise, like barking like Dougie. In other words, they shall make a loud noise because of so many people. And the one who breaks open will come up before them. So there's going to be a breakup and that comes out. We need to be that remnant that goes forth and breaks forth and brings part of what is the answer to all the difficulties as far as all the promises of God. We're the answer in regards to the promises of God, the sons and daughters of the Most High in this time of intercession. And it says, and the one who breaks open will come up before them. That's Jesus, Yeshua yes. HaMashiach. And they and it says, they will break out. It says they, all the sons and daughters will break out together and they will pass through the gate. They'll pass through the door portal they'll pass through the, that area that god has placed as the ecclesia in the gate or the door of whatever uh, portal of the city to bring uh, uh to bring hope and, and 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 get out by it and the king will pass before them in other words yeshua hamashiach will walk before us as we go out through the gate and the portal and the and at the lord at their head have you got anything there, honey, that, uh, that anybody else? that The revelation of that breakthrough is that we're part of the breakthrough. Go, Jesus is going ahead of us. He is the King of the kings, the Lord of lords. But we are walking with him as sons and daughters of the Most High. And I think it's important for us to understand that we are part of the solution, not part of the problem. We are part of the promise, not part of the curses. So we need to come together as that remnant to lift up those who are not hearing from God or are not hearing from heaven and to and to encourage them and to bring them living hope. And that living hope that uh, and that I talked about in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, blessed, blessed be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, blessed be Adonai Adohim, Abba Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, in verse chapter 1 of First Peter, verse 3. And it says, and, and this is what we've got to grab a hold of. 
And, and then it says, according to his abundant mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your abundant mercy and your grace, but your abundant mercy pouring down upon all those who are in those suicidal thoughts, in, in their thoughts, in their visions, in their dreams. We say breakthrough of the light. This is the festival of uh, dedication. This We're going into that, you know, and we're going into first, like in, into that uh, into that time of, of Hanukkah which is in the month of Tevet. And we're just bridging into that. We're not there yet. It's also called a festival of lights. So we need to go break out of the darkness. We need to go through the gate, through the portal, because Jesus is the light, it says in John 8, verse 12, that he is the light of the world. And we're going to follow him through that gate and that portal. That gate and whatever city we're in, whatever nation we're in, we are in the gate or the portal. We are in the place where the ecclesia needs to be to bring that proper hope and direction to everybody in that city or that village. And we need to come together in authority, authority, not only in the mercy of God, but the authority of God to push back the enemy, to push back the storms, to push back the suicidal thoughts, to push back the viruses, to push back the illnesses, whatever it may be, and take authority of that land. Take a, Jesus says, occupy until I return. He's talking about the land that you're sitting on and standing on right now. So it says, abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. That is the living hope who Jesus inside us. Romans 8.11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within us. That same DNA that we are made in the image of God and the substance of God dwells within us. Hallelujah. So that's the breakthrough that comes from heaven through us. God wants to use us as his smashing hammer against the enemy. We are the breakthrough of, uh, we, are, we are part of the breakthrough. We, God wants to use his remnant to break destroy the enemy he did it when he went down to hell and took the keys of hell and death out of Satan's hands and we are made of the same substance and authority and and to have mercy for others but also to take out the enemy mighty Gabor and that living hope that comes through the resurrection and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead so Leslie what do you think about that are you resurrection and life yeah. Is there any is there any dead left in you, or are you just kind of perky? What's going on? Well, I mean, Jesus Christ in me is resurrection and life. So, mm -hmm. so therefore, if I stay tapped into Him, then all is alive and well. If I step aside from that, then maybe not so much life. But I, I need to stay tuned into Jesus, and so yeah. So you stay in tune. Yeah. This month of Kislev, you know, it, we, we talked about, uh, you, you know, it talked about the visions and dreams and, uh, um, you know, and also the testimonies of Jesus. Uh, uh, Philippians, uh, part, well, F Philippians 3.10, it says that to, to know him. Like, do you really know Jesus? Do you really know Yeshua HaMashiach? If we're made out of the same substance or in the image of our God, Adonai Elohim, do you think not the Son is made out of the same image of Adonai, the Father? Do you not think he has the same DNA? Do you not think the Holy Spirit? It's a, tr it's a trinity. Do you not think it's all the same DNA? Do you not think we have the same DNA inside us? We do. Oops. Thank you. Thank you. You, you just, you know, you're, you're kind of pokey when it comes. Yeah, I know. You just, you're like me. Uh, I touch things and the things disappear. But anyway, so the microphone's in your way. All right, so let's get the microphone out of your way. There you go. How's that? So we need to take the hammer and smash the enemy to pieces because we have all authority. Mighty Gabor is in us. That's, that's the point of this. And to bring living hope where there needs living hope to be. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Do you not think the devil's scared of that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead? It's, it dwells in you. That DNA is just hovering. Oh, it's like Leslie making bread. Oh. Do you, do you, do you, do you, when that bread is hovering, is it expanding? Uh, like today. We walked into here, it smells pretty good. 
Do you not, everybody said, I love the smell of that bread. Do you not think Jesus and Adonai Elohim loves the smell of his children that are hovering with the fire of God in them? It says in Hebrews 12, 29, the same, the same, that all-consuming fire, that's in us too. Switch on, flame on. Anyway, I know I'm getting... I, I'm yeah, getting I, I'm getting excited. In verse 4 it says, to, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and it does not fade away. It says it doesn't fade away. So if your inheritance is incorruptible and undefiled, that's holy and, and, and sanctification that we talked about last week. To be sanctified and set apart. God is sanctifying his rent and, and setting apart his remnant during this time. Amen. Amen. And, and we need to know that and understand, even though the storms are going on in Matthew 24, Matthew 25, it talks about rumors of wars and wars and pestilence and, and volcanoes and everything. It says that we shall, my brother was telling me today on his birthday that we shall go through the fire and not be burned. We shall go through the flood and the water and not be drowned. He's like, he's in mission. That's my, my, my brother preaching to me. And I'm saying, hallelujah, wasn't that good on his birthday? He was giving us a preach. Oh, yes, yeah, so we've got more people phoning in and say, yeah, I'll preach to that too. What a, okay, so in, in saying that, we need to be excited about the fire that's in us. The DNA that's in us. And as far as the promises of God, this is the time of the prophetic promises coming alive. And um, as far as dreams and uh, night visions and testimony, um, what what can we uh, what can we talk about there, Leslie? What do you have right now in, in regards to that? What do you, you've got something up here. What have you got? No, I've just got Philippians 3.10. Okay, read, let's read <laughs> Philippians 3.10 because... If you, this is the knowing part, and th there's something else I can finish off here, and then we'll make our bridge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So Philippians three ten. This is from the uh, Voice translation, and and it says, and I want to know him inside and out. I want to experience the power of his mm -hmm. resurrection, and join in his suffering. How many are really excited about that part? I want to. Join in his suffering like oy vey, shaped by his death, so that I may arrive safely at the resurrection from the dead. Have you got your ticket? So you arrive safe? Did you get on the bus? And according to verse 12, it says, I'm not there yet. Oh. Nor have I become perfect, but I am charging on to gain anything and everything that the anointed one, Jesus He's the anointed one. Jesus has in store for me and nothing will stand in my way because he has grabbed me and he won't let me go. Oh, praise, so praise God. The Lord. Yeah. So you, you just said you're not perfect. Yes, and so many other people can say that if they read the scripture. Yeah, okay. So that means <laughs> I'm not perfect. Yeah, you got it. Okay, but the word in Hebrew for perfect is etonian. Right. So, it, but that means in the pursuit of holiness. Yeah. Yes. So, even though we're not perfect, we are in the pursuit of holiness. That's right. So, the closer I get to you, the more I get in the pursuit of holiness. Is that what it means? Uh, no, the closer you come to Jesus. Oh. I, but I as like really getting... As, as flattering as that might be, <laughs> that doesn't win the prize. Okay. Yeah. So, in the pursuit of holiness is... Yep. So that you know him. And the power of the resurrection. Now it talked about it is the suffering. So some of the things I've been putting out the last week in regards persecution and perseverance. So we have to persevere through the persecution. Even all the promises of God. In Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. He says, "What is like God really knows us because He has a plan for us. And if the plan for us is a good plan, is it a good plan?" It is. It's and the promises are a good plan. Do you not think the persecution that Jesus went through was a good plan? Mm -hmm. It it brings yeah it brings about all for the purposes of God. So it are was, you going to get a ticket out uh, a ticket to get out of persecution free? <laughs> Who's going to get that one? 
I, it's not going to be part of it. It's not part of it. We have to go through the whatever that whatever persecution the is. Are, the we will are. grow yeah. in our faith. That's those are faith busters. The yeah. grow us into bigger faith. Yeah. Living hope. It's part of growing up from a child or children, child to maturing in the spirit. So our belief system gets stronger. Our faith system gets stronger. Our trusting system gets stronger. Speaking of, about that, did we get a letter today from my granddaughter? Our granddaughter? What is that all about? Well, you know. Tell me. We talked about it a week ago. So let's let's isn't 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 that the, a? You know, the Lord when the Lord gets a hold and grips someone's heart, and there really is when you come to a, a sense of realization of when we've done something that's not pleasing to him um, then then great you know great change can come within our hearts and, and repentance comes and so um, no, 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 no 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 yeah yeah you know what hmm. when a heart is full of repentance And being sorry and really sorry for what's said or done. Um, there's nothing quite like it, and, and I know it moves the heart of the Lord and His His grace and His mercy when any one of us can come before Him. And well, you know, I, I, the I life application study. I need that back, please. I just want to. Be I know. I care, everybody's careful about a lot of things. She's not reading this. Nobody else looking at this. There was an issue between uh, my grand, our grandchild, and I said, "I forgive you, and I love you, but if you really, really, really believe mm. that what you've done is wrong, write me a letter and tell me so." Well, that was three weeks ago, and and the letter shows up. Is there something that you need to write a letter to to somebody that you have offended? And, and need to ask for forgiveness for. When you get something that this size blank, and, and she apologized, I only had a yellow letter. I wish I couldn't write it in yellow paper. Yellow paper. I said, but it came in an envelope and was wrapped around another one of brown. In other words, she 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 took the time to write Papa mm -hmm. a letter to say, "Would you forgive me, Papa?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you not think it's any different? Forgiveness and repentance for the Father in heaven to get a letter from you of love from your heart that you really mean it. When you write a letter, do you really mean it to somebody when you write a letter? To somebody? Like she's what, nine? I don't know if she's ever wrote a letter in her life. This could be her first letter that she's written, postmarked, and mailed it from Alberta to be to me. Do you think it's important to her? Do you not think it's important to the Father in heaven for her to put down on paper how much she loves Papa and and as I, I'm sorry for what I I absolutely forgive her. You know, do you not think in heaven it's the same thing that it's written down if if you really really mean it? Do you not think there was suffering? That you know him? Does she know Papa? That she could write? She must know Papa pretty good because all the spelling is probably what Papa would do because all the letters, big words. She put big words. Not, I don't know where she got the big words from. But whatever you ver verbally speak to the Father in heaven. She drew, she drew pictures to make sure that I got it. The understanding of her love. And how, how sorry she was. Mm -hmm. Do you not think the Father in Heaven can understand your heart? Mm -hmm. The atonier? Mm -hmm. yeah. the, uh, of coming into that place of perfection? Mm -hmm. uh, of pursuing holiness? Pursuing holiness and forgiveness and restoration? Restoring Israel? Uh, princes, The princes of Heaven? From a Jacob of Swindler? Uh, 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 that Jacob that that nature of man to swing over to heaven's prince or prince, prince, princes, princes. 
This is real today. This is so real today that we need to come into this place of reconciliation and restoration between the sons and daughters of the Most High and so on. So in saying that, the month of Kislev, you know, I talked about last week and the week before, it's, it's the tribe of Benjamin. And Benjamin are were archers, you know, and they were really good fighters with the bow and, uh, bow and arrow. But this is the month of intercessors that can shoot those intercessory arrows right to the mark and hit it as we were praying today against suicides and different things and, and issues across maybe families or land or whatever it may be and healing. This, this is the month of intercessors visually coming to that place, praying into being what God's heart is for you to receive. When I asked my granddaughter, I said, you know, what you're saying to me, I need a letter that you really mean it. Did you get that? Judas was sorry for what he did. And, he, and when he got hung on the what they call the Judas tree, and which has, I want you to know, the, the Judas tree has flowers on it. This this is something that you can look up. A lot of people don't teach on this. And that Judas tree that he was hung on, that he was sorry about, has a certain flower that opens up that's an opioid. So any bees that come to pollinate it, when they go in to pollinate that opioid flower, they die immediately. Even though the tree looks like life with these beautiful flowers that Judas was hung on, it only is death to everybody. And the words were death. And the intent was death. And everything that Judas was saying, there was no life in it. And there was no life of living hope. There's only living hope in the tree of resurrection life. Not in the tree of good and evil and knowledge. And Dougie, I'm going to lock you up and put a tape over your mouth. Just because you like cookies. We, we can't demand from God to get cookies all the time. <laughs> Even though we, you know, we, we love our children and we love everything, but I, David's laughing. Even though the puppy keeps, la keeps wanting cookies, I'm going to say no more cookies, Dougie. And even with little, my little grandchild, there was a point. You probably made fun of them as a child. Gee, but yes. beans so are one Yeah, of the and I got Dougie on one side and Leslie oh, on the other. Word. So it's just wonderful with things popping up. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, this is real today. And we've had some wonderful things happen today, this last week in Revelation. Uh, and dreams and and so on and uh, so any of you that are having difficulty with your dreams any of you that are having issues as far as um, uh, you know different prophetic things that maybe haven't come to light but you, you're getting the, you're getting the vision of that but you're not getting the the revelation we had a phone call from Steve Schroeder a, a friend of ours 25 years head of uh, uh, the ministry, the Christian Ministerial Association. And he just gave us a wonderful call and said, how are you doing, this kind of thing, and blessed us. But he said something into our life this week. What was it, Leslie? Do you, do you, do, what is it he said that was important to the, inside us, that brought life to us? When Just when you think nobody's thinking about you. We were talking about it over lunch. And then he calls at the exact time we're talking about the, how we are in a, the wrong state of mind. Does anybody like us, love us, well, or remember us? I'm just saying. And then boom. There, okay, go ahead. Well, it's not like just because we, you know, we are out, out in the prairies or out, to, you know, it's, it's, that doesn't mean that, you know, the, the organization, it doesn't mean that, um, we've been forgotten by any means and, and that we were not just out there dangling on our own. And so just a personal, a personal phone call of encouragement and um, yeah. 
uh, blessing, you know, it made such a difference in in our day, and it it just really did speak to us that that the Lord the Lord He does He sees everyone and everything, no matter the situation, and it's coming back to Him and making sure that you know that we keep our focus on Him and and not the situation or circumstances that we're in, and and it was it was a real encouragement to get that phone call, and and uh, yeah, we're grateful, and we just say thank you. Thank you, Steve. But he he said, "I love you guys," and he, and he says, "I just one of the th he says we've been ghosting you." Well, when I say that, I didn't know what that meant. And and I said, "What does that mean?" He says, "Well, um, we've been following you very closely and what your writings are and that type of thing, and and uh, and we're so blessed." And one of the things that w that he expressed to us. That sometimes people you, people just don't say it, and he says it's so beautiful to see the way you guys always flow in revelation, basically, right? You know, and 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 the prophetic of the revelation that meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. You know that he would say that to us. That's the first time he said something like that. Well, it's that's so personal, and it's, it's the encouragement. The it's, encouragement, and and just to know that people do care when you're yeah. in the midst of wherever you are in life in whatever station whatever season and it's just knowing that there are others that care there's there's God and he's got his messengers mm -hmm. and his messengers can come in different ways mm -hmm. and so God sent us a message through Steve um, that you know how much you know we are in his sights and how yeah. much you know and so that's the way it is that's the way it is and again, for for anybody out there, not to lose hope, right? That's right. Not to lose hope, and that the Lord does see you, and He does know exactly where you are in the midst of your situation. Because we, with Steve, we don't talk about our ministry hardly ever, and it, but he's very active. With he's on his way to to minister in London uh, on December third. I said, well, the Lord will get you there. We prayed, but what today is all about? We're talking about. Uh, Revelation 19 verses uh, uh, you know 9 and 10 but 10 and he says and I fell at his feet worshiping him and he, and he said to me see that see that you do not do that I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus and that's everything Steve is all about is the testimony of Jesus mm -hmm. you know and, and, and anybody that knows Steve is the testimony of Jesus and he spoke he's speaking it to us in the revelation and the testimony of Jesus and it, and it, then it says worshiping God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy so in the spirit of prophecy there's the testimony of Jesus and the revelation of that and that's what this month is all about and um, in that revelation of understanding what, how God sees us, how other people see us, and how we're supposed to see others in the same way in love, acceptance, and forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, we received a letter from our granddaughter, love, acceptance, forgiveness. We, um, we received some uh, financial blessings that came in that we didn't know that they were coming, and th that God just answered. Mm -hmm. eh? well, they, they just came in. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for the blessings that have come in. There's wonderful things, health-wise. Your health is getting strong. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I'm good. This, I'm what, good. And praise people... God. And, you know, and that that's the thing. All of, all everything about us all is that the Lord wished, you know, that we would prosper and do well, even as our souls prosper, and to prosper in every area. Amen. And that includes the health. Yeah. But there's been a multiple, yeah. multiple. Yes, the uh, Lord just has a multi, been just multiply. This week, yeah. there's been so many healings of, of different people that have been healed so far. Yeah. Right. Uh, Ralph is, you know, uh, seventh week after major surgery. You know, as far as uh, heart surgery and stuff, and he, he's doing great. We've been praying for him, praying for others, and we're getting testimonies from different people who are getting strong. You're looking really good, Ralph. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's praise the Lord for sons and daughters of the most coming together as a remnant, coming together as family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the word family, remnant, remnant family, together in these difficult times. Sometimes it's just a word of encouragement that brings so much happiness and joy and strength. Sometimes it's, it's a gift or sometimes it's a hug. 
Uh, sometimes it's just phoning somebody and just out of the blue, uh, blessing them and praying right. for them. Right. And bringing hope, that living hope that May was talking about in, in, in regards to, and, and Robert, as far as people that might be in a suicidal situation or needing help or through depression. Mm -hmm. During these difficult times, we, we need to be awake in that. And God will show you that in, in revelation and dreams and visions and so on. And that's part of this whole thing of this month of the prophetic of the intercessory arrows hitting the mark. And we are part of the intercessor arrows and God's quiver that takes out and shoots us right into the mark where we need to help people, but people will come and help us. Like we haven't been hit by so many arrows in like it was like a multitude of arrows in the last week of all the blessings that came in, honey. Well, you know, praise God. <laughs> well, I, you know, praise God. We were more than ready for that, I'll tell you. It, it was <laughs> like a tsunami. <laughs> right? You know, it, it's like you go through the stuff, you go through the stuff, and you just kind of like, okay, how much longer, how much more? But then all, it was one of those suddenlies, right? It's, it, suddenly, it's like some of those suddenly. suddenlies that um, now that there's, um, there's, there's a reaping of a lot of stuff that mm. um, that God's, you know, he, He's just showing Himself strong. Yeah. So I, and I, how much He loves and cares. Yeah. So yeah. being this m month of Kislev, okay, which is, you know, it's the first month of 5,782. And we're going into the month of Tevet, which is, the, you know, the month of Hanukkah, which is the month of Festival of Lights and, and, and the feast, feast of Dedication. So a lot of people don't really understand this stuff. And and bridging this, uh, that's why I wanted to go to John chapter 10. And in John chapter 10, um, it, it talks about Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, who actually, th in this particular time frame, okay, is the festival of, of lights and Feast of Dedication. So if you look in verse 22, and it says, the shepherd knows his sheep. Okay, this is, you know, you know chapter 10 is all about the shepherd, Jehovah Rohi, R-O-H-I. He's the shepherd. He knows his sheep. And it's not hirelings, you know. He knows his, he knows his leaders and so on. He loves them and so on. But Jesus is showing by example. We know that Jesus says, follow me. Okay, follow me. Okay, so we follow him. And we're about the Father's business and walking in covenant. So he walked through the different things in his three and a half years of ministry to bring us into a place of understanding so we, we could see things through his eyes and walk in his feet even today, 2,000 years later. So why am I reading out of... Have you got it? Why don't you read it? in, in uh, Or anybody else. John chapter 10, verses 22... Uh, 23 and maybe more. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so this, I've got it it's in the voice translation just now. But in John chapter 10, starting verse 22, and it says, And it was winter and time for the festival of dedication. While in Jerusalem, Jesus was walking through the temple in an area known as Solomon's porch. And Jews gathered around him. And the Jews said, How long are you going to keep us guessing? Sometimes that's us, isn't it? Yeah. How long are you going to keep us guessing, God? Like, when are you going to show up, right? So, um, so they're saying, how long are you going to keep us guessing? If you are God's anointed, and there it is, like how the enemy tries to come in and put that little if and, and try to you insert something. You are God's anointed. And, and insert doubt or a little bit of unbelief. Mm -hmm. You know, the trick from way back, you know, in the garden, it's like, if you are God's anointed... The liberating king announced it clearly. And Jesus then, his response is, I have told you, and you do not believe. Straight up. Your problem is, I've told you already, and you do not believe. The works I am doing in my Father's name tell the truth about me. You do not listen. You lack faith because you are not my sheep. My sheep respond as they hear my voice. I know them intimately, and they follow me. I give them a life that is unceasing, and death will not have the last word. So for anyone yeah. that there's that issue that you contemplate regarding death, 
death will not have the last word if we do if we continue to hang on and grab a hold of Jesus nothing or no one can steal them from my hand my father has given Amen. the flock my father has given you to me to Jesus he's this is Jesus talking and he is superior to all beings and things so the father in heaven is superior to all things no one is powerful enough certainly that devil that enemy that wants to natter into your mind and, and try to tell you stuff to do to harm yourself no one is powerful enough to snatch the flock from my father's hand the father and I are one Wow this is real time with Jesus okay it's there's red letter print here and in verse 22 it says now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter and Jesus walked to Solomon's porch so he's saying okay he's doing a walkabout it's he's going to Solomon's porch there's a lot of good things to happen to Solomon's porch uh, sometimes you have to leave your gift there and come into a place of being restored at times. That's, not, that's another thing. But what's happening here is, again, this is the feast of dedication, but also the festival of lights. And we talked about uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. Uh, 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 you, do you have that, Nate? John chapter 8, verse 12. And we'll keep your finger in where we are right now, and we'll flip over to John chapter 8, verse 12. Because here we're talking about um, the festival of lights and who Jesus is. And I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody saw or saw anything in regards to the menorah behind me, but we're going to talk about that a little bit and more on Saturday. But go ahead, John. 8, 12. Yeah, and if anything around it looks good. The validity of Jesus' testimony. 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of the life. Okay. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I came from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. Mm. I ah. pass, pass judgment on no one. Oh, interesting. Yes. But if I do judge, the decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, own law it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am the one who testifies for myself. The other witness is the one who sent me, the Father. Wow. Again, okay, thinking about the Festival of Lights here, uh, May, uh, based on the, some of the testimony and breakthrough that you're talking about, but what was that about human what? Human? Mm. Test standards. Standards. Yeah. Are we living in human standards right now? Right. Yeah. Or being judged according to human standards. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking to us right today in the red letter. Jesus is talking red letter right now to us. Praise the Lord. Okay. I don't know. Do you see the menorah behind me? It's way back there. Jesus is the light. And, and we're going to talk more about this on Saturday. Uh, but that's... Jesus is the menorah. He is the light. Uh, he is the fulfillment of the menorah, the festival of lights, the dedication here in winter. And, and anything that's, that God does, it always goes from dark to morning, from winter to spring to summer. Does that make sense? So we're in, we're in a time of restoration. We're in a time during the uh, winter months where things aren't blooming. But they will be blooming soon, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think God wants us to come into a place of res restoration and rest right now? Yeah. Is rest good? Do you like rest, Les? Yeah, sure. Yeah? I, okay. In fact, rest is, it restores a whole lot mm -hmm. within your being. Yeah. Okay, so we go back to that scripture that you, that you just read. 
in regards it says verse 20 it says verse 26 to 30 read the 26 to 30 again and it's talking about what do you believe and what do you don't believe and that's and that was what we're, I was talking to my granddaughter about believing trust forgiveness and she responded okay all right okay go ahead so yes uh, uh, so it started in verse 26 right yeah um, it says uh, well you almost have to start a little bit okay go that. ahead um, starting in verse 25 this is uh, John 10 I have told you and you do not believe the works I'm doing in my father's name tell the truth about me you do not listen you lack faith because you are not my sheep my sheep respond as they hear my voice I know them intimately and they follow me Mm. I give them a life that is unceasing and death will not have the last word nothing or no one can steal them from my hand my father has given the flock to me and he is superior to all beings and things no one is powerful enough to snatch the flock from my hand the father and I are one. Oh, the father and I are one yeah. and we're wrapped up in that package yeah we're in the oneness as it says in John 17, that the, Jesus wanted us to be one with the Father as he is one with the Father. So this is the celebration, okay, the, this dedication, okay, in, in verse 22, the uh, feast of dedication, in a few months it's going to be the, what? What kind of feast are we getting into in March or April? Well, it's going to be, what? Well, Passover. Passover, and which is pretty good. And then 40 days after that, we have what? Pentecost. Pentecost. That's even, that's pretty awesome. Do you not think this Feast of Dedication and Light set up, or is doing the set up or the foundation to what Passover and Pentecost is all about and, and the communion of that and, and, and covenant? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Covenant letters of heart between you and the Father. Oh, I can't wait to hug my little granddaughter. I'm passionate about correction. And so is the Father in heaven when he brings correction to his children and saying, oh my goodness, look at the heart of that child. And gets that response. Oh, 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 oh. send the Father a love letter in heaven from your heart that's real. Not something from a Judas tree that's nothing but smoke and mirrors and opioids and, 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 and kills the messenger, which is the bee that comes in to pollinate it. You, ah, anyway, so John chapter 10, just, we're going to, I hope Marie can get, get ready to bring into a closing here. This is kind of going into the closing. John chapter 10, Jesus is the good shepherd. And it says, I'll start in verse 7. It says, and then Jesus said to them, Again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Did, you not, did we not, the door of the sheep? And, you know, we looked at this in Revelation chapter 3, okay, uh, when we're, you know, Jesus at the door knocking. We did that last week. You know, Brock did a great job reading that. We're going to look at that again more on Saturday. But the portal at the door of the sheep. We just read that in Micah chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. It says that there's a gateway, there's a portal, and there's a remnant, and there's a change happening between the, those who are Jacob, swindlers and whatever else, moving over to Israel, which are the prince, princes, prince of heaven, to go through the gate and the portal that Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, is going to walk before us. In this time right now is important. God is going through, and, and these are the gates and the portals of all the cities that need the ecclesia there to stand for those who are needing hope, needing direction, building up the faith, building up the body of Christ. There's no greater time than this because of people losing hope. The suicidal rate right now between young people to middle age to, is too high. It's higher than anything right now. It's, it's greater than... Hell. COVID is not even close. It's, uh, uh, heart disease is not even close. Cancer is not even close. It's the suicides and, and death through opioids that is higher than anything right now with our younger people. 
Do you not think do you not think that smoke and mirrors and that Judas tree needs to be taken out in Jesus' name in your city? To take that Judas, that opioid tree that looks so good with the flowers, that's nothing but saying, I'm sorry for your humanity. And come and die here and you'll feel better. That has got to stop in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is that is not what heaven is all about, and that's not that's not what God is all about. He wants to restore and heal everything, body, soul, and spirit. So to Jesus, I am the good shepherd. And then Jesus said to them again, if you've got something better, you let me, you jump in. Yeah. Um, John chapter 10, I'm, I'm going to go seven down. Yeah. And it says, and Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, when he says assuredly, do you not think he's, he's saying, I'm, I'm making a point here from heaven? Assuredly, take this. I say to you, I am, I am, Jehovah Shammah, I am, I am the door, the portal, the gate for those sheep, my beloved. What did Jesus say to Peter? Love my lambs. Mm -hmm. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Three times. And every time Jesus said that to Peter, Peter got a thick head. And says, you know I love you. Most assuredly, you know I love you. I love you. He didn't get it. So, okay. So, and, and, and then verse 8, it says, All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. I am the portal. I am the gate. I am the door, says the Lord. Jehovah Shammah, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. There's going to be different places where he's going to send us to find pasture. All the different churches, all the different denominations are like the different pasture, pastures for the sheep to grow into a community. All right. And then it says in verse 9, I am the, okay, I am the door. What do you got in verse 9, honey? Kids. 9, 10, and 11. Hit the, here's the big hammer. Are you ready to smash? Are you smashing the enemy here? Here's the big hammer. Hmm. Here it comes. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be liberated, will go in and go out, and will find pastures. The thief approaches with malicious intent. Oh. Malicious intent. Isn't that interesting? Looking to steal, slaughter, and destroy. I came to give life with joy and abundance. Well, you know, that malicious intent almost goes back to what uh, May said in regards to what human judgment. Mm. Human judgment of the judges of this world are bringing in malicious intent to what? To bring distortion upon the children of God and mankind. We need to protect them. Okay, keep going in verse 10. Uh, Verse 10? 11. Yeah. Uh, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep in his care. See, the point is, are we in his care? Ah. Have we made that crossover from living for ourselves to having Jesus be the Lord and master of our lives? Because once we make that crossover and we walk into the to his pasture, the pasture of the good shepherd then we are in his care. So the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep in his care. The hired hand is not like the shepherd caring for his own sheep. When a wolf attacks, snatching and scattering the sheep, he runs for his life, leaving them defenseless. Coward, right? Well, that's the, the malicious intent well, the, and the human judgment heart. over here. Well, yes, people with a heart, or not people, but those with a heart of malicious intent. The, you who know, are they? Those who are definitely, you know, not following after the ways of God. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, and um, you want me to read? Yeah. 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 So how far? Just take it right down to fifteen. Okay. Fifteen, sixteen, in there. Yeah. That's, so that's then, right. like in in verse thirteen says, the hired hand run, runs because. He works only for wages and does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. As the Father knows me, I know the Father. I will give my life for the sheep. Amen. 
What verse is that? 16? 15. 15. Do 16, 17, 18. There are many more sheep than you can see here. And I will bring them as well. They will hear my voice, and the flock will be united. Ah. Isn't that interesting? Like the Lord is gathering this is his time. remnant, right? Yes. His remnant from, from throughout the globe, throughout yes. the universe. This is the time. And so they will hear my voice, and the flock will be united. One flock, one shepherd. Amen. Who cares what denomination or local church you're in? Who cares? The point is, when we belong to Jesus, we're in his care. Amen. And he is bringing those who are seriously intent on walking with him and serving him and allowing him to be the one who cares for them. He says, I will bring them all. I will, I will bring them as well. They will hear my voice and the flock will be united. One flock, one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to lay down my life. But I will take it up again. My life cannot be taken away by anybody else. I am giving it of my own free will. And he did. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave his life of his own free will. He submitted to his Father in heaven. And he said, not my will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. And for us as the human beings, the human doings, as we are on this planet Earth right now, mm -hmm. for us to say... Not my will, Lord, but your will be done in my life. Amen. And his authority allows has allowed him to give his life to take it back again. And it was the Father that commanded that. Amen. And so, Jesus was obedient. Amen. So when you look at John chapter 10, and you see Jehovah Rohi, and Jesus is the shepherd. It says Jesus came for the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know? And we're grafted in. And then you look in, in verse 22, it talks about how Jesus went to the Feast of Dedication. Or, or, he is the Festival of Lights. He was the fulfillment of the menorah. He was the fulfillment of light in a dark place. You can read that in John chapter 3, 16 and 17. He's the fulfillment of that. So, and we, yeah, and March for Jesus. So if Marie can bring us into that place, and, and so into that place of clothes, she's, she's got a worship song, Holy is the Lord. So I'm going to mute so she can come to that place of worship. She's got some testimony and she's got some uh, some blessing and anointing to come forth all around the nations. So take it away, Marie. Amen. Take it away. Amen. Be before I share my testimony, I would like to read a verse from the Bible. So in John chapter 3, verse 3. The word says, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, yeah. Jesus says in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, <coughs> he cannot see the kingdom of God. When Jesus says something and he repeats himself, we need to really pay attention to that. And he's saying, in other words, truly, truly, honestly, honestly, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot. It's plain English. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Salvation is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is what Jesus has been talking through all the scriptures. Without him, we cannot abide with the Father. Without him, we cannot seek the kingdom. Without him, we cannot have eternal life. Without him, we cannot have forgiveness for our sins. Without him, we cannot have the, the, the harvest that is ready right now waiting. Without him, we cannot do anything. But with him, with him, we can reach the unreachable. With him, we can take the mess 
in our lives and turn it to a message to the world. With Him, He can make the brokenness in our life turn to a beautiful vessel that He can use to reach the whole world. This is with Him. So I just want to bring a quick testimony to you and we are still celebrating with heaven today on behalf of my mother who has given her life to the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. this morning. Two days ago, I was talking to my mother. She has had a relationship with the Lord for years and years and years. She is in her 70s. She lives in, in Mauritius where I was born. She is a very strong believer of the Lord. And she said to me one morning, two days ago, she said, I woke up at 3.35. She is an early riser. She, get, she gets up early very, every morning and she prays. She just gets in the presence of the Lord. But a couple of days ago was a different encounter. 3.35 in the morning, she woke up. She has a little armchair beside her bedside. She sat on there and she started to pray. And while she was praying, something happened. She said she lifted her head up. She was talking to God. And all of a sudden she said, Speak, Father, speak. I can hear you. I can hear you speak. I can hear you. I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know. I'm just feeling so much joy right now. I'm just feeling so much peace right now. Just keep speaking. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Keep speaking over and over. And she said to me that it feel like she was taken somewhere. And that happened between 3.35 and 5.40. The words that I've just said, that she mentioned to me, these are the words that she remembered saying. After that, she doesn't remember what happened in that encounter because she was taken somewhere. And when she came back to herself, she said that her, her T-shirt that she was wearing was soaked with tears. And her thought she had her phone in her head and her phone dropped and she came back to herself and she said what just happened brother and sisters we know what happened she had a divine encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and she related the whole testimony to me and she really moved my heart and when she was saying it to me, she, her eyes were fixing up and, and, and she it just feel like I've seen her in the moment that that happened. She was in awe. She, it, it just feel like, you know, it, there is so much embracing, there's so much intimacy that, that was happening still when she was telling me the story. So we talked about it yesterday again. We talked about it. And this morning, we were talking and I said, Mother... Do you remember I said to you, when you're ready, it will be time for you to give your life to Jesus. And she said to me, I've mentioned that before, and she said, you know what, I pray. I have a relationship with God. I speak with God on a regular basis, and I speak to God like I speak, I'm speaking to you. And I said, Mom, this is the regular life of a child of God but what I'm telling you is something that is a one time a one time connection that lasts forever every day we don't we don't um, say the, 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 the salvation prayer unless you've backslidden and then you're coming back in the kingdom of God yeah. but I say mom this prayer it's a lifetime prayer that switch your life around 360 degrees. It's literally saying, Lord, I've been driving my car all my life. 70 plus years I've been driving my car. 
What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the passenger seat and get in front of the wheel and take the wheel of my car and now I follow you and direct me. Basically, that's what it is. So I said it clearly to her. I said, Mom, are you ready to give your life to Jesus today? And she said, yes. And I said, Mom, are you sure? Yes. I said, just close your eyes, open your arms, and just repeat the prayer of salvation after me. And she said that prayer, I'm telling you, this has been on our prayer, <laughs> my husband and I, for, for, for a long time, for a long time. And today, today, my mom gave her life to the Lord. All glory to God. And I know that heaven has thrown a party <laughs> and, and heaven is rejoicing over one, one sinner. One sinner, heaven is rejoicing. And the word of God says, he who wins soul is wise. What is wisdom for you? It's not if you have a, a, a doctorate degree or a bachelor degree or a master's. Yes, you're smart. But what is wisdom for you? What is heaven wisdom for you? is to bring somebody in the kingdom of God and their life shall not be the same again. And that excitement was, was so overwhelming that my husband and I went live today and we prayed with, with other people. Other people joined from Mauritius, from over a different part of the world. We prayed with them and, and we, we repeated the, the prayer of the sins. Those who felt that they were led and gave their life to the Lord, all glory to God. But we're just feeling into that same flow as we were talking earlier with, with Pastor Ray and Pastor Leslie. And it's still happening. Your moment is now. You don't have control of tomorrow. It's time now for salvation. You never know what can happen tomorrow. I may speak to you today. I may be in heaven tomorrow. So you don't have control over tomorrow. And I will really encourage you today. Just drop everything that you're doing right now. And close your eyes. And open yourself to the Lord. And repeat the sinner's prayer. The salvation prayer with me tonight. Lord Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I come before you yes, this Lord. evening. I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. you I have sinned against heaven. Lord, tonight... I want to surrender my life to you. I want to, for you to forgive me of my sins. I give it everything to you, Lord. The sins that I've committed, that I know, and the sins that I've, I've committed, and I don't know that I've committed that sin, Lord. I ask you for forgiveness tonight. Lord, I believe in my heart that you came on earth. The Virgin Mary gave birth to you. You walk on this earth. You shed your blood for me on Calvary. You were put on a cross. You died for my sins and the sins of the world. And three days later, you rose again from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. And you ascended in heaven. I believe, Lord. I believe that Thank you Jesus. died for me. You shed your blood for me. You ascended in heaven and you are seated right now in the right hand of the Father. And I believe soon, very soon, Lord, you are coming again. Lord, today I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, 
be my personal savior. Jesus. I accept you in my heart today, Lord Thank Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to cleanse me, to purify me, to prune in my life. Wash me clean, Lord, as white as snow. Everything that is not from you, Lord, everything that I've been dealing with, Lord, wash them all away. Your words are precious to me. I know when I'm when you forgive me, I will be forgiven. And my sins will not be remembered again. It's washed, washed away, clean, clean slate. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. Brothers and sisters, if you really mean that prayer of sinners, I say to you tonight, Jesus welcome Christ. to the family of God. Thank welcome you, to the kingdom of God. Your life will never be the same. If I say to you that when I gave my life to the Lord, my life is a rosy life, I will lie. My life is not rosy. But through salvation, Jesus turned me from a broken vessel to a pure vessel. From an empty house to a fully furnished house. The power that Jesus has given me when I gave my life to the Lord, it is the power that helped me to stand and stand firm. When the devil comes to trial me, he try, but he fails. Because Jesus is with me. He is in me. He Amen. is around me. So brothers and sisters, whatever you have been going through your life before salvation, take, take, get rid of it. Leave it in the hands of God because God will make the change. God will make the change and keep trusting him, keep obeying him. If you don't have a Bible, go get yourself a Bible, read the word of God, let the word of God penetrate your heart. This will change you because the word of God is alive. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The word is alive. Enrich your soul with the word of God. It's the fruit that you need for your soul. It's the word of God. Join. Join a ministry. Like you are joining the ministry of resurrection life ministry. Keep faithful with ministry that are God-fearing ministry. If you need to join a church that are God-fearing church, join a church. Pray with brethren that Jesus. are on the same level as you. And if you need to get baptized, get baptized in water. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, your life will never be the same. Will never be the same. So we have a last song tonight. It's called, Holy is the Lord. <clears throat> Holy is the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. His glory, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! Together we see. 
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, the disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? Well, we've had such a wonderful time in this gathering with so many things with prophetic and the word and, and the worship and Testimony. testimony. This is an Acts 2 church. <laughs> That's what an Acts 2 church is. You know, fellowship and, you know, we haven't, you know, you're supposed to break bread together and eat. Well, we, we're going to do that. We're going to go have some, maybe some, uh, uh, <laughs> some treats here later. We'll see. I know you guys will, uh, uh, you know, on Saturday we get together 1.30 uh, for telecast uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, based on God is in the Ark, A-R-C, Apostolic Resurrection Life Center. Um, and uh, so we bless you to be part of that and join us on Saturday. Um, this has been so wonderful to have uh, David and Marie uh, from Eastern Canada for this, you know, uh, uh, with the worship. And, and thank you, David, for being our broadcasting host and so on from Eastern Canada. And, and Ralph, uh, Reverend Ralph, uh, seven weeks from, he's kicking Actually, up. Actually, I counted back. It's, this is the eighth week. Oh, I thought it was eight. <laughs> it's eight weeks. That's what I, That's on my great. calendar. Eight is the number of resurrection life. New beginnings. New beginnings. You're out of the ark. You're into the new <laughs> promises of God. Oh, that's awesome, Ralph. Amen. And color in your cheeks. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, praise the Lord. You know, and we've had so much happen this last month in ministry around the world. You know, um, uh, Apostle uh, Momo uh, Sealy uh, went to Guinea which is a Muslim nation, and we, we're, we're, you know, since 2017, having breakthrough, many Muslims coming to the Lord, and and there's a lot of, last time, he, he was there like a few weeks, like a month, six weeks ago, and bullets were flying, and so we went back, and, uh, and taking the bullets of God from heaven to take out the enemy, so, uh, so there, you would think that six weeks after a, a, a coup and a revolt, uh, re revolution or whatever you want to call it that you know people would be scared to go back and do another uh, revival and and uh, those type of things while well, he, he was back there with our with our uh, people in uh, Guinea and they just had a great time many people came to the Lord in Bangladesh uh, uh, you know uh, Pastor uh, Bilio, uh, many people have come to the Lord. We sent some Bibles there. We want to send some more funds. So for those that want to help uh, it, and send e-transfers in to, so we can send Bibles to uh, more more to uh, Bangladesh, uh, is uh, uh, the, our e-transfer number is uh, resurrectionlife90 at gmail.com. 
Uh, maybe David can put that up uh, for anybody that wants to send a, an e-transfer to us because we also have to need funds. At the end of the year, there's all kinds of programs going on everywhere. Right now, uh, uh, Apostle Momo is on his way to Ivory Coast, and we're going to be doing conferences there with our people in the Ivory Coast in the next two weeks. What's happening right now are women of WOW. WOW. Uh, Leslie, what, are, what does WOW stand for? Do you uh, well, are women of warrior, warrior and worship. Like warriors of worship, yeah. They are warriors, but they are, through it, through worship, there's warriors, and and these women are highly all, motivated. <laughs> but they're they're from all the various different churches yeah. in in Monrovia, and, and um, they're they're a mighty force to be reckoned with in the. You know, in the heavenly realm. Oh. So they're, they kick butt. Let's they kick butt are way. right now. And, and Apostle Sandra Seely, yeah. okay, who has been with us since 2008, yeah. and a daughter of our, mine and yours, uh, and just because uh, Momo, Momo married into the family is a good thing because he came with that blessing, right? But they're doing an awesome conference right now in Liberia. If you can look into that, great. Uh, there's about uh, 200 of them or more that are uh, just on fire women for God, all different denominations, as Leslie was saying, on fire. So that's happening in Liberia. Then uh, mm -hmm. also last last month, uh, Bishop John Kuhn Kuhn mm -hmm. uh, was in Sierra Leone uh, doing um, uh, conferences and, and, and crusades there. Also, uh, crusades in Liberia. Many people getting saved. I saw them baptizing different people. Um, mm -hmm. And you know one of the ones that got baptized in water? Was one of that lady that was that... Queen Water Spirit. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That, that was, a, you had to go, anyway, I'm just telling you, things are happening. Wow. Wow. Anyway, so uh, she was delivered, and now she's baptized. Uh, Marie, Marie talked about, and a part of that church, praise the Lord. And uh, in India, we prayed for Pastor Paul to get out of the hospital. We did. Um went through some great difficult times he's back home uh, there was over a thousand dollars of medical bills so uh, i'm going to pray for some of the funds to come in and help them uh pastor sunil and, and uh, malik malik in uh, punjab uh still we're looking for friends to come in to buy a computer for him he needs that but also one of his people got into an accident and 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 uh, going through some great medical issues there so we want to pray help that pastor sunil chapala in uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, they're doing, they're reaching out, and uh, they have a, a children's church, an orphanage, and that type of thing. We need to help with them during this Christmas time coming up. And and yes, uh, Pastor Aaron in uh, uh, also in India, uh, doing the Bible college there. We got, we need to raise seven hundred dollars uh, before uh, the uh, in the next three four weeks uh, to send there for the uh, uh, graduation of our, our seventy Bible college students. <laughs> Hallelujah! In that are uh, going to uh, disseminate and take the word of God in more in India, and that's just a few. So if you can help us, we'll send it out and pray for us, and we'll pray for you. Um, yes, the the e transfer again is Resurrection Life ninety at gmail .com. You can also send mail. Go to our website. Go to pay, uh, PayPal on website if if you want to help us out. But just pray for us. You know. Um, it's exciting to see the advancing the kingdom of God, and we're doing that with you in prayer and provision and in fellowship as family. So with that, thank you, Marie, for the, the wonderful testimony and the worship. Is there anybody else that has a, a prophetic word or a word to, to, to bring this to a close? Uh, I have something for the group. Okay, okay. Great, David. Go for it. Yeah, today, uh, yesterday, actually, uh, I, I know this lady that we had just met at the fire of God here. And she was talking about the 99.1 Christian music station here, and and they, they do play a lot of the the, the different secularized uh, music and that. And and I was talking to her about well, what about um, testimonies? Uh, what about business uh, Christian businesses? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's been laid upon my heart. To pray for these Christian radio stations across Canada, and awesome. to reach out to link with Bible-believing believers, and so more of boldness can come out of the 
the, the announcers so they can begin to speak the word of God on the airwaves and to proclaim, uh, like you said, the, the land, declare that the land is ours, to give them more boldness. And so, so again, uh, we, we went out there, we blew the shofar, we started proclaiming God's glory right, in front, right around there, and we were just naming it ahead. Of, you know, it was, God gave me boldness. <laughs> and uh, we went and blow, blow the shofar at a couple of different places uh, of idolatry in, 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 in the city. And, you know, we were just on fire and, and boldness. Mm -hmm. So I encourage people out there to, to proclaim God's uh, place in your city, in, in your town, uh, whether that's uh, in, in a, a, a different area of, of uh, maybe of spiritual heaviness, you know, yeah. proclaim God's glory. Praise Amen. God. And have a Jesus march, a, like we did in Brandon last year, and, and maybe we'll get one going in Ottawa and uh, different places. Yeah. Gimli, I know Robert wants to get one going there, and he's got a friend in Steinbach. And, you know, we need to get Jesus marches going around the world. And at the very least, you can march around your block. Yeah, you march know? around your block and, <laughs> and blow that so far, right? Yeah, and, and and you know, and and just really pray for oh, the praise, people yeah. in your area. You can yeah. you can march along doing that too. Yeah. So. I also got another call today. You know, we have so many people around the world. Uh, you know, it's the hundreds and thousands, and so I know Leslie's saying it's time. But I got it. I, 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 Apostle uh, John and Evelyn Amande in Kenya. You know, uh, 2019 when I was there ministering, uh, we, we uh, 10 acres was a uh, land was donated to us for a Resurrection Life Apostolic Training Center for a church, for an orphanage and a Christian school. Well, it, the Christian school's up and the kids are in it. So, and, and the orphanage is there. Uh, so J John's requested $500 to help feed the kids and that type of thing. He's up on Facebook all the time. Um, he's been part of our, our, our ministry here since 2008, 2007, you know, uh, out of Africa. Um, yeah, out of Africa. That's a pretty good sound. Uh, but John Amande, we can bless him. And, and the other thing is, uh, um, you know, Bishop uh, Bishop Andrew and Ruth uh, Oma in Nairobi, uh, Kenya. Um, their feet. You know, I, I gave testimony I think last week in regards to their 2014, 2019, and changed the name of the city of Psalms to the, the city of refuge. And um, what's happened in the last 10 months or more, over 100,000 people have given their hearts to Jesus. And he's feeding most of them. So if we can get some funds to help him, Ikebera and Kibera, um, we want to bless them too. Things are happening around the world. Praise God of the revelation of Jesus and the testimony of Jesus. And the salvations are happening. And we just need to be part of it as part of the remnant together and the ecclesia in the gap to, to protect those that need help. So bless you. We'll see you Saturday, 1.30 1 uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, this is the first time we had two production managers and all these different cameras going in different <laughs> ways. But I tell you, we got action going in the spirit. And we have dogs. Bar we had a dog barking, little Dougie, because he was getting cookies. But we had lots of testimony too. So Leslie, why don't you just... Uh, is there, do you want to end, end in prayer or sure? Okay. Alrighty. Um, you know what? Just to you, just to kind of bring it all together, and and even to confirm um, or affirm those who you know may have made new newly dedicated their hearts to the Lord, and and just stuff for no matter how short or how long a time that we walk with Jesus, we can say and we can declare today that out of Isaiah fifty four seventeen and Psalm ninety one eleven that we declare no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper or against our families. Nothing that the enemy could set up against us can prosper. And his angels have charge over each of one of us, and no evil will come near me or my home or my family or anything concerning me, and we fear no evil in the name of Jesus. And we can declare that we are forgiven by God. We are forgiven by God. I have and we have no fear, no guilt, or no condemnation in our lives. Amen. Why? Because the spirit of the life of Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And we walk in freedom and liberty by the spirit. And that's from Ephesians 1, 7 and Romans 8, 1, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. And I declare that I am right with God. 
you can say that I declare I am right with God, not because of anything that I've done, but because of what Jesus has done. He has taken my sinfulness and given me his righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 5.21. So we have much that we can say that, that we are more than overcomers. We are more than conquerors. And Jesus is Lord. Jesus and our Father, our Father, the Father of the universe is Lord over all. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord in, in our hearts and our lives. Holy Spirit, have full reign, and we say bless you, and may the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, till we see you next next week or on Saturday, praise the Lord, safe travels, and uh, we love you lots. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night.